Hey guys, my name is Maddie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you guys about an absolutely terrible experience that I had with Uber about 24 hours ago, over 24 hours ago now. If you guys aren't familiar with Uber, it is a rideshare app. You're able to use your phone and book a ride with Uber drivers. And it's basically like a taxi service, but it's just like normal people with their normal cars driving people around. Up until yesterday, my Uber experiences were fairly normal and nothing like out of the ordinary, but yesterday changed everything and You'll see why. Okay, so this past weekend, me and a couple of my friends were invited to an aquarium festival in Dallas, Texas, completely unrelated to the Uber ride, but that's where we were this weekend. We were in Dallas. I only really use Uber when I'm traveling around for work and we don't have a car, so that's why we were Ubering this weekend. We were going to the airport yesterday to go home directly from the aquarium venue, but instead of getting picked up from the venue, we decided to get picked up from the McDonald's across the street because it's like less confusing because there's a lot of gates at the expo center and McDonald's is just a set location so we just decided to walk across the street to go to McDonald's. Throughout the video I will be putting up screenshots of conversations between me and the people who I was sharing the Uber with, Tyler and Tori, and also us sending information to our group chat with our other friends who were at the event. And I will also be sharing video of me in the car and the Uber driver talking to us as well because it's kind of alarming so here we go so it was 5 59 when we got inside of our uber car the driver was named tony he was driving a dark blue nissan rogue and we were just headed to the airport so according to the receipt that i was first charged the total was supposed to be 33 dollars 96 and when we started going, it was 5.59. The trip was supposed to take 28 minutes to get to the airport. I screenshotted the route that was supposed to be taken. So that's what's right here. Um, this is us going from the expo center to the airport. So as you can see, it's like, that's what the route looks like. And then here's also a map of the exact same route, but in maps. So you can see that it's supposed to take 28 minutes. And yesterday there wasn't any traffic really around the time that we were leaving because it was a Sunday. We were leaving the expo center early so that we were able to get dinner at the airport before our flights took off. So thank goodness we left early because we got there a lot later than we were expecting to get there. We got in the Uber and his car like smelled pretty nice. And he was like really nice. He offered us water and Tyler and I were sitting in the back seat and Tori was sitting in the front of the car. And at first, this guy seemed like super nice. He asked us if we had any like weird Uber experiences, which was foreshadowing because this was definitely the weirdest, most terrible Uber experience any of us have had. And at the start of the ride, we didn't really have any stories to tell him. Tori Ubers kind of a lot, Tyler and I Uber when we're traveling. And then he started going on and telling us about the weird Uber experiences that he's had being an Uber driver, which was like pretty normal and kind of interesting to listen to. Then he made a kind of, racist comment about knowing about African-American lingo when talking about a passenger, which made us kind of uncomfortable. And that's when things like started going downhill. He started telling us about how he was a very spiritual man and he likes to bring his passengers closer to God and that he picked up our ride because God was telling him that someone in the car needed to be saved and we needed to figure out who it was. So then we started getting kind of uncomfortable because none of us in the car are particularly religious. So. We just started going along with it and we were being like really polite and just listening to him and he starts like full on preaching to all of us and we were just, you know, going along with it and being polite because that's what you do, I guess. So we were just all like, okay, this is happening. It's kind of weird, but it's happening. This is when I started filming a little bit to show our other friends that weren't in the Uber that he was preaching to us. So this is before we really started knowing what was going on. I'll subtitle what he was saying. We still didn't know that there was anything like really going on. You can hear the... GPS in the background saying to get off at exits and then telling him to make u-turns and he wasn't doing it I know you can't really tell that he wasn't doing it But you can just tell you know He was like not taking exits because it kept telling him to make u-turns So I'll subtitle that and put that on the screen now He was a murderer He had uh, high rankings in the Pharisees and Sadducees world But when the Almighty called him revealed to him the many things that he would suffer. So when you accept this call, accept it with the knowledge of the many things that you're going to suffer. For he that desires to live godly will suffer persecution. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from all of them. If I would not have been afflicted, I would have gone astray. You can play church all your life. I never really understand what you're in. Why is that? You're not paying attention to who called you. You're not hearing his voice. He says, my children hear my voice. And the voice of his of stranger they do not follow. So he was saying that one of us in the car was the person that needed to be saved. And I was just trying to joke around and lighten the mood. And I said that it was Tori. <laughs> And then he was like, actually, I think it might be you. And then I started getting kind of uncomfortable and I don't really like confrontation or that he was like kind of directing anything at me. When you have a call from the Almighty, you have a gift. You've been listening to the gift that's inside of you. That song. What you do with it is not my responsibility. Now tell me what you've experienced. all like really uncomfortable and we just said like yeah it feels like church like we were trying not to like provoke him in any way and basically we were trying to stay as quiet as possible with like short answers so hopefully he would stop I tried to change the topic a few times and ask him about like if he's ever picked up any weird people or anything but he just went right back to the religion topic and I started watching the GPS to see how far away we were because I was like oh my gosh how much longer do we have to like go through this this is making me really uncomfortable and that's when I started noticing that the time and distance from the airport was just going up. Like we weren't getting any closer to the airport. And that's when I started getting really worried and recording more. Then he started asking us about our religious backgrounds and how much time we spent growing up in church. And one of us mentioned having like a Catholic background and he was saying how he was Catholic previously and he became a drug addict and an alcoholic and he became like addicted to fornicating. So it was just like a really like weird topic to be talking about with like Uber passengers. All the while we were still watching like the time and distance from the airport going up. At this point I had already mentioned to them, I was like, hey guys, like we are getting farther away from the airport. Like the time and the distance is both going up. We are not getting closer to the airport. Like what is going on? He's like missing exits. So then he completely turned down the voice of the GPS, which you can probably hear in some of our other clips. You notice that the GPS voice is completely gone. So he turned the voice off of the GPS and he said that God was making him miss exits because we need to figure out who needs to be saved. And this is when we're all like, oh my gosh, he's literally purposefully passing exits and getting farther away from the airport to keep preaching to us and figure out who needs to be saved in the car. Thank goodness we left early because we definitely would have missed our flight. We just kept watching the time. We're like, okay, we're eight minutes away. And then we realized we're like 15 minutes away and the time just keeps going up and the distance just keeps going up. And we're all like, how, how, how are we gonna get out of here? Like, what do we do? We're not getting closer to the airport. Where is he going? Like, what is he doing? He's like supposed to know how to get here. He says that he's taken drives to the airport before, all this kind of stuff. He has a high rating on Uber. He's done like 500 or something trips. He's been driving with Uber for like four months. So you figure he knows how to get to like probably the most popular Uber location, which is like to and from the airport. At this point, we're pretty much fully aware that he's purposefully skipping exits to keep us in his car. Then I got on camera that he mentioned pulling over on the side of the road to talk to a woman about God, which is like crazy to pull over on the side of the road when you're in an Uber and it's charging them for time and distance. And also it's just like very sketchy to be pulling over with a passenger on the side of the road and stopping the car to talk to them. And I said, okay, let's do this. I pulled over, I stopped the car, and I said, what do you see?
he also mentioned, which I didn't get on camera, a guy asking him if Uber knew that he was doing this and he told his passenger to not tell Uber. And then he told me that earlier I had mentioned Tori needing to be saved and he said that he knew that I needed to be saved and he saw God all over me and that I wouldn't be able to rest until I surrendered to God. So at this point, he had completely turned around like, I'll show you guys the map. We went down the highway and he wasn't taking any exits and then he just like hooks around at like an exit and gets back on the highway and goes in the same direction we were coming from and then like gets off to go towards the airport. And then when we finally got to the airport, which was 32 minutes late, our drop off time was 6.59. We got in the car at 5.59. He passed our gate and Tori was like, oh, you're passing their gate, like stop. So then Tyler and I got out of the car and we had to walk to where we were supposed to be. And then he kept passing Tori's gate and Tori was like, please pull over, just let me out, I'm gonna walk. And she got out and had to walk to her gate as well. And the drop off point of where he dropped her off was actually like a no entry zone at the gate. Like it says like terminal E, no entry. So yeah, she had to walk to her gate. The trip was supposed to be 28 minutes. We didn't hit any traffic. The trip ended up being an entire hour long. And the original price of the trip, which I had mentioned earlier in the video, was $33.96 and then the trip was adjusted at the very end to reflect the time and distance that he had traveled extra with us. And the final price that I was charged was $51.63 for literally being kidnapped and held in someone's car talking about religion, not even headed to the destination that we were supposed to be going to. When we got to the airport, I contacted Uber and told them about like the situation. Um, I'll put what I said on the screen right here so you guys can read it if you want to. Um, just pause and read it because I don't want to leave it up for like a super long time. I got a reply back and it said, we're sorry to hear that your driver made inappropriate comments during your trip, Maddie. We understand how uncomfortable your conversation must have been. Based on your feedback, our systems have been instructed not to match you with this driver again. I've also added $3 in Uber credit to your account. So $3 back when I had to spend an extra $20 to be held in someone's car for an extra half an hour driving around is ridiculous. So then I got back with them and I said, I would at least like to be refunded for the extra half an hour he went out of the way and the extra time we were charged for him. This is unacceptable and ridiculous. And then they got back with me again later and said, we have reviewed your concern with refund and we're happy to help. We're glad to see that our colleague has already provided an appropriate adjustment. We understand that your experience has been frustrating, but we will be unable to provide additional credits or refunds for this concern. So I was like, are you kidding me? I got $3 back. I went to Twitter and I posted about it. You guys added Uber support and were like, what the heck? And then Uber support contacted me through Twitter and apologized for it and gave me back the money that it charged me extra for him just like missing exits. Um, and on Twitter, I'll post what they said, but it literally said something like, we're sorry that your driver missed a turn. Like he did not miss a turn. Like I'll put up the map of what the original was supposed to be up here, like on the top. And then on the bottom, I'll put what the final route was that he took. And then I also put a red line on the map to show you guys where he was supposed to turn and how much extra out of the way he went. Like he had plenty of opportunities to turn around or get off in an exit and correct himself. And he just kept going. So this is not just missing like one turn. This is missing like multiple exits and purposefully keeping us in the car, which is basically kidnapping. He wanted to go from point A to point B. And instead we're being taken from like all of this like different areas, all this extra time and extra money. And then finally being dropped off at a place that wasn't even like where we were supposed to go, like wasn't even at our gate. So at the end, I noticed my Uber score for the trip had gone down. So I was at a 5.0, which is like a perfect score. And it went down to a 4.5, which made me really sad because I'm always like really respectful to the drivers and um, usually really quiet in my Ubers. Like I don't really talk to people unless they talk to me first. And yeah, it just made my Uber score drop a lot because he rated me low, which was crazy to me because I don't know if he knew that we weren't very religious by how we were responding or something, but we were super polite to him the whole time. So I was just really frustrated that my Uber score took a really big hit because this guy rated me low. So, and he's still driving for Uber. I checked his account today and he got like a like compliment thing that was like, thank you so much. And it was like posted today. So they didn't even like suspend his account or anything. He's still out there and he's still probably doing these kinds of things to people like pulling over on the side of the road and talking to them about God. 
and telling people not to tell Uber what he's doing, but I'm telling the world what he's doing because what he's doing is wrong and disgusting. So thank you guys so much for all of your help with this concern by like adding Uber support and retweeting the original post that I put on my Twitter. I really appreciate it. It helped me get some of the money back even though I still had to pay for the potentially dangerous situation that we were put into by taking an Uber with this guy and he's still out driving for Uber. So make sure you guys are really safe with Uber. If you're alone, definitely share your location with a friend. Even if you're not alone, share your location with a friend and send them your ETA so they can monitor, you know, if the time is going up and where you are and send them like a screenshot of the route and everything to make sure that you're still going where you're supposed to be going. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys have had any crazy Uber experiences like this one and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.